the Maddox. They're going to lose $50 million this year as a league. $50 million. Looking up to see the attendance at USC games, Southern Cal games with Juju, Juju Watkins. I don't Arizona. February 12, 2024, 6 p.m. game at home, 4,564 people. Now, capacity of the Kalen Center is 10,258. Juju Watkins, who is an elite basketball player, can't fill up her own building. This is what I'm talking about. You, want, you may think that she's really great, and you may think that she's going to do what Caitlin Clark has done, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt as she was a freshman. But she was talked about on a level in which they were trying to compare her to Caitlin Clark and say she was better than Caitlin Clark. Newsflash, she wasn't. She wasn't close to being better. She shot 40% from the field. Caitlin Clark shot 47, 46%. She didn't shoot anywhere near the three point, three point percentage that Caitlin Clark shot. She didn't shoot 90% from the line. She didn't average nine assists a game. She didn't lead the country in scoring and assists. Like, she didn't. These are facts. She had a great freshman year, and she's a really good player. But this is a home game against Arizona. Let's take a look, let's take a look for another one. I'm, let's see here. As the season went on, let's look. They lost to UConn the tournament, tournament, tournament. So State, 2-9, 3,100. Understand that this is what we're talking about. When we're talking about impact, it's not just the impact when you play your rival or when you play one of the best. It's your impact. And what you draw when you play the shit can. I don't know what Arizona State's record was. I don't even care. I, I don't care. Arizona State's record, oh, like, let's see here. Yeah, they, like, they're not very good at this stuff. They were 10 and 12, 10 and 13 when they played this game. Again, not a good team. 1,128 people show up. Colorado. Colorado was good. 5,762. So a half empty building against Colorado, who. Went to the Sweet 16. Utah. Nine. That was a 12 p.m. start. I'm going to guess it was a Saturday or, Saturday or a Sunday. Washington State, 2671. Washington, 3416. Oregon, 2282. Oregon State, it's 2749. Hell, I'm going to let's look at it the other way. Let's look at it the other way around. UCLA. Let's say when they, when they did they play at UCLA this year? They did not play at UCLA. Let's see how they played when they went to Oregon. Oregon had 7,145 people. Matthew Knight Arena. Seats 12,364. So as great as Juju Watkins was, and as important as, as good as she was, as good as Juju Watkins was, she's not drawing this, this type of crowd. Wherever Caitlin Clark went last year as a senior, wherever she went as a junior, the road arena was full. People were paying to see Caitlin Clark play over their own team. They didn't care about their own team. They cared about watching her play. And that's what we talk about when we talk about changing the game, the impact. And Cheryl Miller says, oh, they know. We're going to have another gold medal. Who cares about the fucking gold medal? Nobody cares about the gold medal. You know what people cared about? They cared about watching Caitlin Clark play in the Olympics. That stupid committee stole, stole the opportunity for the world. The world, not the United States of America, because WNBA games are not being played all over the world. And if they are, no one's watching. Let's not sit here. It's not, let's not treat it like it's the NBA. It's not the NBA. It's the WNBA. It's still not. It's still not mainstream like that. It just isn't. Not worldwide. You took away the opportunity for the world to see Caitlin Clark in action in the Olympics, the grandest stage internationally. And what did you do? We said, fuck it. Uh, no, let's go send Diana Taurasi, who's been there five times already. Let's go send Chelsea Gray, who, who's averaging seven points and four and a half assists a game this year and was injured for the last 10 months and has been absolutely terrible and is still really injured and really shouldn't be on this team. Let's go send over, uh, shit. Kelsey Plum, who's five foot eight, yet Caitlin Clark ain't physical enough, but five foot eight Kelsey Plum is physical enough. And Kelsey Plum still shoots at a 38% clip, 39% clip, whatever it is. And she's the second or third best player on her team. Let's go send Jackie Young. Let's go send Jewel Lloyd. Jewel Lloyd, who shoots 35% from the field and does nothing but score. Does not a, she's not a point guard. Doesn't average nine assists a game. Doesn't average six assists a game. I don't know what she does. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I don't even care. You blew an opportunity, and you got Cheryl Miller on here asking for a 1,200% increase on what the NBA decides to give, according to Rob Parker, the welfare league. Because that's what it's been for 25 years. It's been a welfare league. It's subsidized by the NBA fully 
They're still going to lose $50 million because they wanted private jets. They wanted chartered planes. Well, you're getting them, and that costs money. It ain't free. This isn't food stamps of America or you're getting wick for your babies. This is real shit. This is money. It costs money to give you these things. So they're still going to lose hand over fist. But the NBA allocated this money for you. The NBA decided what it was worth, what you were worth to them. But your response, Cheryl, is to say, oh, that's a low ball offer. No, it's not. It's actually a great offer, and it's an offer that was created because of Caitlin Clark. And if you think that we know or people know that this is going to continue to grow this league, it's, you can't sit here. You cannot sit here and say that because Paige Buchers isn't drawing 1.5 million viewers to watch her play on Sunday afternoon in the middle of January on TV. She's not. She's a great player. But there have been plenty of greats before her from UConn, plenty of greats from South Carolina before her, plenty of greats from so many different schools who haven't had, who maybe have the impact on their home floor to fill up a building, but they don't have the, 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 the viewership impact because their game doesn't excite people. Their game doesn't make you say, wow, holy shit. Caitlin Clark's game says it, makes you say it in every capacity. It does, and you don't like it, but it does. And Cheryl Miller like, loves Caitlin Clark. I know this. So I'm not, look, I like Cheryl Miller. I think Cheryl Miller's great. I think she's delusional, though. I think she has no business sense whatsoever because she doesn't know basic math. And she says, I don't know math. Well, Cheryl, go in for a job offer and, and if you're making 20 bucks an hour for a year or two. And then you sit here and say, oh, I want a 1,200% increase in my salary. So I want to make 220 an hour, $220 an hour. I was making 20. I want 220. Get out of here. Is that 12 or is it at 11? I don't even know. 220, 240 an hour, whatever it is. I love Rob Parker's response. Spot on, my guy. I love your response. They need to hear this shit because they keep living in a land of freaking, in a dreamland. This isn't Disney World. This isn't Disneyland. This is not some amusement park where you dream about shit. This is real life. This is real money. You got what you got. You make the deals on your own. See how much you get. See how much you get. God forbid something ever happens to Caitlin Clark. God forbid she's injured for something. I would never wish that. But God forbid that happened. Where do you think the viewership of this league would go? It'd go into the toilet. Nobody would watch it again. Because there's no players like her. And if you think there are, show them to me. Because I've watched Paige play. I've watched Juju play. They're not like her. Or Kendrick Lamar. They're not like us. Us being Caitlin Clark. Not me. Us. She's an us.